Thanks for staying with us. So according to reports, federal government has proposed a total expenditure of 20.51 trillion naira for 2023 financial year, considering our dwindling revenue that has made our debt servicing higher than our revenue. Joining us on the show is the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Muhammad Maman uh, Nami, who's going to tell us exactly how he intends to help increase revenue. Welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good, morning. Good to have you again on the show. Thank you for having me. Yes, I took a story yesterday uh, in the papers that <coughs> our debt servicing was about 1.9 trillion and, uh, and our revenue was about 1.6 trillion somewhat and that um, we're actually borrowing 308 billion naira to service our debts. That is quite um, heartbreaking and um, especially when the Minister of Finance kept telling and reassuring Nigerians that we are able to pay our debts, that they will have, they have um, plans to engage people like you to increase revenue via taxes. How is that going? And do we really see any light at the end of this tunnel? Well, thank you very much. Um, let me appreciate you once more for the key interest you have in the narratives around our annual estimates and also the expected role of the revenue generating agencies to assist government in the reducing or input appropriate address the issue of uh, budget funding gap that we face as a nation. The summary of the uh, total estimate, as you rightly pointed out, is 20.51 trillion. And the uh, government is expecting from all sources to generate about 9.73 trillion naira, uh, leaving at the budget deficit, a proposed deficit of 10.78 trillion naira. That is actually a huge tax before all of us. However, uh, for every given uh, problem or uh, circumstance, there is always a solution that can be preferred. And there are, there are many solutions that uh, can be put together to address this. And as part of it is that the government has charged us as the head of revenue generating agencies or units to improve on our performance in ensuring that this huge deficit is addressed. And uh, part of the things that we intend to do as FRS is not to increase tax rate. We are not also going to introduce new taxes. But what we are going to do is to ensure that we bring in many, many people to tax net. And when you do that, uh, those that are hit at or not paying taxes, you are able to bring them to paying taxes, uh, to, to, to pay uh, taxes, and the government is able to generate more revenue for, the, for, for it to be able to address this budget uh, deficit. But for the specifics, let me uh, also bring to your attention that government at Santa generate enough to cover probably the entire budget, but the country is not so structured in a manner that government will generate probably revenues from reality, revenues from customs activity, mm. revenue from port of authority and FRS, and keep everything. Whatever we generate is shared among the three tiers of government, be it, that is the local government, the state, and the federal government that employs some of us to work as the chief revenue officers. So if government were to be generating everything at the center, use it to fund its budget, I don't think there will be any deficit. So that is the first clarification I want to uh, make because this year alone, FIRS is expected to collect 10.3 trillion naira. And I can assure you we are on track. By end of December, we'll have every cause to celebrate for the first time that 
a revenue generating agency in Nigeria is able to achieve that much. Last year, we got 6.4 trillion. And since the month of August, we've gone past that mark already for 2023, 2022. Mm. So we are very confident that right. if not for the way and manner, the structure, the governance is structured in Nigeria, and the fact that there are several issues that are confronting, that are mitigating or me, me, conf, that are stopping us, yeah. that, that are posing challenges to our own realizing the revenue potentials. Nigeria should be in a position to generate more than 30, 40 trillion. Right, one then. of those reasons, one, uh, let me give you this background of that of the reasons that we that the challenges we face as a revenue generating agency in Nigeria is that Nigeria in the whole of this world is the only country that currently has a total of 813 revenue agencies <laughs> made up of Federal Law Revenue Service, which I work for, the Nigeria Customs. Oh. Two, and we have 37 internal revenue authorities at state level, that is FCT, IRS, and 36 Board of Internal Revenue, plus 774 revenue committees at local government level. The number, these numbers I'm reading now, excludes other policy revenue collecting agencies like uh, the commission, which is now NUPRC, the NCC, MP, and so on. This, uh, this multiplicity of re revenue generation agencies have brought about inefficiency in revenue collection mm. and insufficient resources for this respective government. If you check our neighbor, the smallest of our neighbor, Niger, uh, uh, Ghana, name every country though they have one single revenue authority and with that you are able to manage all the taxes you are able to uh, address all the challenges and you are able to mobilize more revenue. it's not as if taxes are not paid it's not as if levies are not paid but paid to who Mm, interesting. Mm, Let me get to your question. Yes, yeah, yes. Um, I would like to ask you a follow-up question since you have said that, you know, these are the challenges that we have because there are so many bodies, uh, you know, controlling this. And um, I really want to know what, what, um, is, what are you doing? I mean, what is the body doing about this since they have recognized the problem? And uh, there has to be just one body that is regulating it because you have said that it is not as if people are not paying taxes. So what's the way forward? The way forward, uh, 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 we have started conversations in the beginning of the year. If you've been monitoring our activities, we started uh, what we call a national tax dialogue last year. And uh, the second edition happened in March, precisely on March 26 or 28, between 9th and 28 this year. And the theme of that conference is of the, the national tax, the second national tax dialogue is harmonizing our tax administration for efficient service delivery and optimal revenue mobilization. This is what we did. Mr. President was personally there. But it's one thing for you to make a proposal, and another thing is for the bureaucracy to make it happen as quickly as possible. But we are making serious progress on that. What we intend doing uh, in order to uh, to understand the in, in, to maximum revenue, when we have an harmonized system, we are going to be able to stop the existing practice where tax dodgers, for instance, meander among relevant tax authorities and confuse them to evade tax payment. That is for those that are evading taxes, because if you have a plural, if you have a multiple tax revenue generating agencies, it is easy for uh, for somebody to do, but with an harmonized single or a single revenue agency, you are able to track all incomes, you are able, able to track all transactions and other activities of taxpayer, thereby ensuring a significant improvement in revenue yield. 
the outcome of which will be a win-win situation for governments at all levels. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm still on the issue now that um, you have spotlighted as one of the things that is not making your agency very effective in getting uh, the tax. Um, yeah. I know that um, it's quite difficult to reduce agencies in this part of the world. It's very difficult mm -hmm. because a lot of all these agencies have been for years, uh, have a lot of workers, have people who are you know, earning salaries from that, and they would always complain, where do you send us to? So uh, have you met mm. with um, stakeholders and um, lawmakers to see how this can be passed into law as quickly? Where, where have you taken this conversation to? Or is it still in the planning okay. process? I would even want to add to that because don't you think Nigeria is too big a country for you to also have one singular source for taxes? I mean, or two. all the other states that are having their independent um, local taxes, is that, is that not the reason why we have some federal government taxes and employment state taxes government. and state taxes? I mean, I'm getting a bit confused here. I don't, I don't, don't you think Nigeria is too big for us to have that single tax unit? I think thank you very much for very important for that very important uh, intervention. Harmonizing the tax system in the first place will not result in job losses. Okay. While we talk, one will talk about harmonization. We are saying instead of having Lagos Internal Revenue, for instance. Let's have federal in line. Let's have a federal revenue authority okay. with one administrative structure, with one technology, being uh, regulated by one law, so that if you want to pay taxes that has to do with Lagos State Government, you only need to go to revenue authority once. If you want to pay taxes that have to do with federal in line revenue. You go to revenue authority only once. You may do your returns only one time in mm. a year. Okay. What we mean by that is that if you want to pay for your, if you want to pay grand rent, for instance, and you have value added tax to pay in that month, you also have personal income tax for the things you do. You are going to fill only one form, declare everything, and everything goes to one pocket. So what happens is that there will not be job losses. The revenue will grow uh, in, in a manner that you never can ever expect because, like I said before, it's not as if some of these taxes are not paid, but they are not paid to the right channel and they end up not reaching the government coffer. So those employees are needed to continue. You, you just you absorb uh, 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 what you are going to do. It, you are going to create a synergy for a national revenue agency leading to a growth expansion and improvement with capacity to absorb all existing staff of the states and local government revenue authorities. Those employees are needed to continue to cover the operations of the agency in the various states and local government. In fact, uh, more local, local staff will be needed to reach every nook and cranny of the federating units, which will lead to more employment opportunities uh, uh, as against the fear that probably that would be uh, job loss. Secondly, a national revenue authority is able to deploy technology to cover all collection and administration activities nationwide, including in states where they are still operating manual processes in tax collection. That will give us an opportunity to create and maintain a single electronic database for tax administration in Nigeria and the automation of the tax administration processes will plug leakages, ease revenue ad, uh, administration, improve tax compliance, and ultimately maximize revenue collection. What we currently face in the course of our audit, for instance, is that you open the book of a, a company to audit them mm. because you have deployed technology to be able to do that. We can do some of this even right in our office without necessarily visiting taxpayers. Then you find income that was paid into in an individual's account. Then you also find an income that was paid into company's account. It will interest you to know that law has not given me power to ask that individual to pay taxes. So if the state government in that particular state has not visited that company and to be able to generate or to be able to use technology to uncover this revenue too. 
the person has earned that revenue without paying taxes. So these are the things, and this is what we mean by people find it easy to meander, to confuse people and get away without paying taxes. This is something that we still need to bring you back for because mm. I, I find that when people want to solve problems, they, they, yeah. they try to just say, you know what, let me control it so I can mm. solve it. Because yeah. we're all fighting for to decentralize government. You know, let us have the states more empowered to do what they, to what they need to do. But hearing you say that harmonizing, for me, for me it still sounds a bit too, um, too cumbersome. I think that it's more effective when, other, when individual states are able to have revenue, um, generate revenue, and then remit to you as a then center. Central, yeah. But it's a conversation we can have for another. But I think, uh, more importantly, for where we are right let, now, where we are right let now... Me intervene, okay. Let me intervene in that. Okay. Uh, that is not going to be an issue. Mm. Uh, if you have an administrative uh, uh, body that is functional, the revenue operator that is functional, the revenues that will be generated based on the law, the administrative procedures can be put in place, is that you, when you generate the revenue based on the relevant laws, the state government are supposed to collect personal income tax, for instance. They are supposed to collect uh, 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 withholding tax on individuals, and this, when you have single revenue, you collect, and you don't even, you just remit that same money to that company, uh, the, the state account. We have started this with synergizing our revenue administrative uh, processes was with some state. Kaduna State is a good example. Everybody is happy, uh, Governor Rufa is doing very well. He is not a magician. He has been able to listen to Kozotan that are advising. He's been able to listen to FIRS, and he's also able to listen to John Tax Board. And these recommendations, he accepted them in good faith. And we even delegated or sent one of our staff to go and head the Revenue Authority of Kaduna State. And the first process that he, we insisted he must do the first thing we consider you must do is to harmonize the taxes at the state level first. And I can assure you, from a meager amount of 12 billion annually, Katuna State was generating, they are already collecting over 80 billion. So with harmonization, you have more revenue. Okay. With harmonization, you have you are able to give more employment to people because when you invest taxpayers' money in capital projects, you are creating employment. When you invest uh, taxpayers' money in the health sector, you are ensuring that people live longer. And that okay. is what is happening today right. in Kaduna State. Thank you very much, sir. I have to let you go at this time. Thank you very much. As I said, we're going to bring you back. We still need a bit more clarity on this, but uh, I have to go on a break. When we come back, we want our other guests to stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>